Hey, this is Rick Kozelich, Injury Specialist from ExercisesForInjuries.com. In today's video, I wanted to go through the five rules to ease elbow pain when doing bicep curls in the gym. And I'll get Donnelly to demonstrate the first rule, and then I'll end up going through it in detail and the other four. Okay, there we go. So the first rule is really looking at that wrist position and keeping that wrist in neutral. So a lot of times people will keep the wrist bent and go through the whole movement of the bicep curl with the wrist bent, um, or they'll stay neutral and at the end they'll add a curl at the top. And what that ends up doing is it ends up putting more strain on the forearm and that strain on the forearm ends up pulling on uh, the elbow and ends up affecting the biceps and leading to the pain in the, in the biceps and in that elbow area. So what we wanna do is keep that wrist neutral so the focus ends up being in the bicep curl, uh, in the bicep area as opposed to in the forearm. So that ends up being rule number one. Now rule number two ends up being looking at your wrist flexibility and making sure your wrist flexibility is good. So this is, so one little test that you can end up doing is, you know, bringing, you know, bringing your hand down as far as you can and ideally you want to be at 90. And then same with the other direction, you want to end up being at 90 as well. If you're, if you're nowhere near, that means that you need to end up working on your flexibility. So when it comes to the flexibility, you're going to do a stretch like this. So Donna Lee will grab her hand and bring it a little bit further and looking for a light stretch here to work on that flexibility in the wrist and in the elbow. And then she's going to go the opposite way as well. Arms straight, bringing that wrist back. And if you're not feeling much, then really look at the fingers and bring the fingers into it. And that might intensify the stretch uh, as well how long you're going to hold the stretch. So the, uh, lo looking at sets, reps, time, uh, and intensity, you're going to end up doing like one set of two repetitions. You're going to hold the stretch for 20 seconds. And looking at the intensity, you're looking at, for, you're looking at a light stretch that you're going to end up doing. And I would recommend end up doing on both sides. So a lot of times what ends up happening is you lose that flexibility in the wrist uh, in the forearm, in the elbow, and that ends up leading to uh, elbow pain when doing the bicep curl. So make sure that you got good flexibility in the wrist. Now the third rule ends up being working on improving the tissue quality. So along with the flexibility, what we need to do is work on the tissue quality so that the tissue, the, the tissue in the muscle ends up being good and healthy. Uh, it doesn't have any tight spots. It doesn't have any trigger points. Um, that it ends up being healthy and contracted properly and moving properly. And one way of doing that is utilizing the, the ball, like a ball. I just got a huge ball, this, so it's easy for you to see, but you can end up utilizing something like this, which is a dog ball from the dollar store, or you can end up utilizing a golf ball, tennis ball, uh, racket ball, squash ball, um, lacrosse ball, whatever you end up having. So the more dense it is, the smaller it is, the more dense it is, the more intense the, the massage feeling will be. The softer it is, the larger it is, uh, the, le the less intensity there will be. So what you're going to do is you're going to roll that ball in your forearm area, you know, from that elbow area, rolling it down back and forth, and then you can end up doing the exact same in the lower part of the forearm. So with the rule number two, we worked on the flexibility, flexibility in the wrist and the elbow uh, and the forearm. And now with this third one, we're working on improving the tissue quality. So there is, in order to decrease any tension, that muscle tension that's in there, shortening uh, uh, trigger points, hot spots. So we're trying to decrease them. And, the, and rule number two and three end up working really well hand in hand. Okay, now looking at the fourth rule, when doing bicep curls, there, there tends to be a, a number of techniques that people end up doing. So they'll end up doing like the standard bicep curl, um, which ends up uh, targeting the biceps, uh, you know, is almost like the second best exercise to target the biceps. Now, the, the other way is doing a hammer curl, which is this, so thumbs up and curling. Now, this one has been shown to have the greatest muscle activation of the biceps. 
So this ends up putting the greatest amount of emphasis on the biceps. And then the, th the third one is with the palms down and, and coming up. Good. So when it comes to those three, when it, when it relates to um, elbow pain from the bicep curls, doing the palm down one and curl, this ends up putting a lot of stress on that forearm. And that excess of stress on the forearm might end up leading, increases your risk of elbow pain. So if you end up having elbow pain, this is the one that I would end up avoiding, the, the palms down and curling up, because there's, it ends up putting a lot of tension in that forearm, which can end up leading to elbow pain or um, in, increasing the irritation and elbow pain. Now, looking at the hammer curl one, which is the thumbs up, this one as, as well, you need to end up watching out for. So it ends, emphasizes the biceps a lot more, but it also ends up emphasizing that the forearms as well. And a big thing to remember is really to keep that wrist in neutral, which we end up talking about in rule number one. Um, but watch this one as well. It's not as bad as the other one where the, the palms are down and curling, which ends up putting a lot of stress on that extensor part of the, of the forearm, which is the most common area um, that people end up getting elbow pain. Oh yeah, so there we go. So that ends up being the fourth one, like minimizing kind of the reverse bicep curl and also watching out when it comes to the hammer curl uh, when it relates to elbow pain. Um, if you feel elbow pain coming on or if you had a history of elbow pain, watch those two exercises, especially that reverse um, bicep curl. Okay, now to the fifth rule, we're looking at rowing movements. So doing excessive rowing movements. So Donna Lee will go through an example. So just going with like a, a, narrow, gr a narrow grip row. I mean, that ends up being a rowing movement. You can also end up doing like a single arm row. Those are all examples of rowing movements. So looking at what your workout is, if you end up having a lot of the rowing movements, that ends up putting a lot of st stress on your, um, on your elbow, your forearms and your elbows uh, affecting elbow pain. And that can end up being barbell work, you know, bent over barbell rows, uh, you know, uh, barbell bicep curls, uh, that can end up being pull-ups and chin-ups. So those ones can also, all those are pulling movements, um, overhead and, and you know, chest height or below can end up um, e irritating the elbow and leading to more elbow pain. So there you go, that ends up being the five rules to ease elbow pain when doing bicep curls in the gym. Implement th those rules and your elbow pain will decrease or be eliminated. Now if you want some of my other best tips and tricks when it relates to dealing with elbow pain, then I recommend you click right here. I have a brand new free report called Five Tricks That Fight Elbow Pain and Tightness. Just click right here, let me know where to send that brand new free report and I'll send you that brand new free report right away. Now if you're watching this on a mobile device, tablet or smartphone, head down below in the description and click the first link which will end up being exercisesforinjuries.com forward slash elbows. Let me know where to send that report and I'll send you that report right away. Now if you end up having a question or comment for me, you can leave it down below in the comments section. And then lastly, hit subscribe in order to get future pain relieving videos.